All right, Shalom, my team, Shalom. Hey, Yabba Shemel Shai, broke a thumb to my dear brothers out there, you little man and sisters, worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. Our praises to Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone. All right, welcome back to another current events, prophecy, and madness. And the subtitle of this one is going to be The Devil's Food. And that's what exactly we're going to touch a little bit on the devil's food, which is literally the food that we're putting in our mouths and how it literally is playing against you. The food that we're eating, eating is killing us. Now, I heard as of recently, um, if your body is sick, then that affects your spirituality, you know? And we know there are certain cases to where certain brethren in Texas is that they, they're sick. But to eat bad foods, to put these foods in your mouth that's destroying you, it's also playing against your spirituality. So let's see what we got queued up here. And let's just talk about this, how it's just madness on how Esau is attacking us through the food. organic natural food companies that were bought out by huge corporations start with one of my favorites primal kitchen that was bought by Kraft Heinz company garden of life was bought by Nestle Burt's bees was bought by Clorox epic provisions was bought by General Mills Tom's of Maine was bought by Colgate Applegate Farms was purchased by Hormel Annie's Homegrown was bought by General Mills. Zico, who makes coconut water, was purchased by Coca-Cola. Larabar was purchased by General Mills. And Honest Tea was purchased by Coca-Cola. An organic natural... So as you can see, um, the popular brands that you think is organic, you think that it's more fresher than the other brands come to find out that the companies that make coca-cola uh crafts you know those different type of companies that we know that um their products is not they they're they're full of gmos and whatever else well the more organic label companies or organic label brands is is under the same people so it goes to show you that it don't matter what you Actually, consuming is bad for you in some fashions. Whether Esau is like, you know what, I'm going to take a little bit more poison out of this one and put a little bit more poison in that one. Nonetheless, it has poison in all of it. As you can see, even Tom's, that toothpaste where it says fluoride free, where Colgate is the one that um, owns that. And Colgate is the one that put fluoride in your toothpaste. So you see how it's a, it's, you see how honestly, you have to pray over everything you're using and consuming. You have to pray over it. Pray, pray for your, pray over your food. Pray over your freaking toothpaste, man. <laughs> it, it's it's madness, but it's it's the facts. You know, may Yahweh Shemel Shai be with you to keep you healthy, even though we eating this poison. This is Ezekiel four and thirteen. It says, and the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whether I would drive them. So. It's a part of prophecy that we had to even eat these chemical based and can cancer um, growing foods, man. Let's see what we have here cute next. Purchased. The beef you eat may not be real beef, but beef printed out by high tech 3D printing. This kind of beef not only looks no different from real beef, but also tastes and textures are similar to real beef, even more fragrant. This kind of technology beef sounds unbelievable. How do they do it? We all know that beef consists of white fat and red muscle. Technology beef is the use of technology to reconstruct them both. Comer. Scientists will first extract bovine stem cells from cattle and then put the stem cells into a Petri dish. The Petri dish is a magic tool for artificial technology to mimic the environment of the cow's body. Here the bovine stem cells will feed
feel like they are still in the bovine body. So the bovine stem cells will keep dividing and growing in the petri dish. After the stem cells have divided enough, the scientists will make the stem cells into something called bioink. Bioink is divided into two kinds. One for printing beef white fat, one for printing beef red muscle, comma. Next, the shape, size and brain to be printed are designed in the computer. And once set, the 3D printer will print out a piece of beef appearing according to the program set 1, 1. In order to ensure that the printed bovine stem cells are still alive, the whole printing process should be carried out in a sterile environment. The printed beef is then placed in an incubation chamber to allow it to continue growing. This way, after a few weeks of growth, it will form muscle fibers and fat tissue like real beef, so that a piece of technological beef that you can hardly distinguish from the real one is made. However, due to the current cost of this 3D printed beef then the real beef is expensive. To popularize, there is still a way to go. When the time comes, if it really popular, you will support this kind of beef. .comer. The beef you eat. Yeah, yeah, it's locked, brothers, man. I know it's like, man, you don't want to hear about no food, man. And how defiled it is and how you have to eat it. <laughs> So like it, man, but you know, these, these things got to be, um, spoke on because it just further highlights that the self proclaimed white man, the Edomite, okay, he is the devil because he's the one that fund these laboratories and put these people up to the task. So you hear, you heard that term technology beef. Oh man, that's a term for your, for your man. That's a term for you technology beef re-eating technology beef okay and they also got a thing called um uh what is it it's a glue um meat glue and basically when you even buy steaks or any type of beef in a store it's glued together you know what i'm saying by a glue meat glue and like you said they're using stem cell research to to create the beef artificially in a in a in a lab it's madness, man. This is um, Micah 2 and 1. It says, Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds. When the morning is light, they practice it because it's in the power of the hand. So it's these Edomites, these self proclaimed white people in their large multi million dollar companies that's funding laboratories like this and devising iniquity. You know? And they're practicing it. It's actually these these meats are on the market. You know, we 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 eating this not just beef, but it's chicken, it's fish, it's it's terrible. You know, that's why the scripture said, "Woe unto that man." Esau gonna be in trouble for what he's what he's doing to the people. You best believe it. Esau eat him, you in trouble, man. This video right here, it was a video I had by Alex Jones, and it was on aspartame. But they, they said due to behavior, they took the video down. Due to the video, the nature of the video, they took it down. So I, I went and found another video of the same thing talking on aspartame. Let me see what she's talking about now. Every dish is a magic tool. Okay, so if at any point you did not think that we were living in the upside down show when it comes to nutrition, this week's scandal around aspartame should really make it easy to understand. Hi, my name is Afrat Lamandre. I'm an NP with a PhD in integrative medicine, and I empower people to realize that their symptoms are not in their head. If I'm appearing on your For You page, you probably realize that the system is not designed with your health in mind. And this week really drives it home. This week, the World Health Organization finally issues a statement saying that aspartame, the sweetener found in Diet Coke, is actually a known carcinogen. When the article came out, I was like, yes, this is awesome. We finally have the studies to show what all of us were thinking all this time, that aspartame cannot be good for you. I was like, for sure now, they're going to take it off the market. And boy, was I wrong. Because as you see here, even after this statement comes out, the intake guidelines stay the same. But wait, there's more. The FDA actually doubled down and said that even though aspartame is being labeled as a possible carcinogenic to humans, it does not mean that aspartame is actually linked to cancer. They say that they note that they did not raise safety concerns for aspartame under the current levels of use and did not change the acceptable daily intake. Are we following here? The study comes out saying it's a carcinogenic and the FDA says, but it's not really linked to cancer and you can keep on drinking it. Uh, are we all on the same page? Are we hearing the same thing? I, I'm, I'm, running, I'm running out of words. 
I honestly don't know how to end this video. So I'm gonna end it the way I end all my videos, which is, I hope this helps. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. So <laughs> because, you, yeah, yeah, I understand. I understand her because it's like, what do you say? What do you say? How are they getting away with all of this? You know? The damn devil, man. So you can see that aspartame is a man-made um, uh, uh, sweetener. And as you heard that she has a proof that the, the W to the dot, 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 H, 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 dot, dot, O, you know what I'm talking about, that they, they said that it links to, to cancer. It has a carcinogen that leads to cancer. Then the FDA, FDA doubled back down and said, um, they're gonna keep the reg they're gonna keep it in our foods and and everything of the sort they're gonna keep it in there and that it's not it doesn't link to cancer so these devils are just playing with the minds of the people and just keeping it to where you stay poisoned <laughs> oh man this is a this is a Sirach 30 and 25 it says the cheerful and good heart will have care for his meat and diet. So now that we know that we're being attacked in such a fashion, you brothers and sisters out there, be mindful when you eat stuff. Because as we started the, the intro of the lesson, the things that you're eating is affecting your spirituality. You know, it, it basically the things that we're eating is putting demons on us. That's that's messing with our minds. So you want to limit yourself with you when it comes to your foods and stuff so you can have less fucking demons messing with you man okay you eat a damn eat the food you eat some piece of meat or something eat some rice and next thing you know you're just getting angry for some of your the spirit of anger <laughs> is, is on you now because it was it was came from the food or something and you, you know it's, it's just a lot of barrel it's a lot it's a lot you know let's go on to the next thing here let's go on to the next <clears throat> peep how jake is living peep how jake is living man look just peep how jake is living for you page you it's the second of the month on 131st and broadway and rents past due when they don't pay it's like i get the pink slip here and then i get a posse because i got a gang of them they might have weapons they may have guns however they want to get out and when things go down out here it's not pretty they just threaten to tear up my truck, threaten to sick their dog on me, threaten to shoot me, and I'm by myself. I got a bad hip. Alti Graham's sick of this because he deals with it every month. I don't want these trailers. I do this to help people. I'm a recovering addict. I've been sober 16 years, thank God. Graham's got four of these RVs in the ever-growing homeless encampment of 500-plus campers in six square miles. I buy them from the auction. See, I'm not trying to keep them in there forever. So I, I give them the trailers to live in, and then they start trying to take them from me. Formerly homeless, he says this is his way of giving back, as long as you pay your $500 rent. I told him if you pay me $1,500 cash, you can have a pink slip to the trailer. It's yours. If you live in the trailer for a month, it's $500 a month. If you go look in that big trailer, it's got two beds in there with 14 of them in one trailer and four kids then after i gave them that trailer their mama came she was all living in there with them i say y'all it's too many of y'all one of the 14 is mariah hardy who invited us in to see how they all fit uh, it's been awful really. Oh, really i'm just trying to stick it out for my mom and them and every time it rains and stuff the roofs they leak in and i have to sleep on this bed right here and it's, it leaks continuously on me and it's she's too small in here to keep someone from stealing it, a small motorbike commands most of the floor space in between the two beds that 14 people share with an extension cord strategically held up by this pink teddy bear's toes. The kitchen consists of a microwave underneath a bong, kids toys, hot sauce and garlic salt. In order for us to make any food and stuff, we have to unplug everything like the TV and the phones and stuff and plug it in. What's it like at night? It's just... You have to just watch. 
all your stuff because they come past. They they stole the kids' bikes and their scooters and stuff from outside. We had them locked up. They cut the locks off, and somebody robbed a dispensary, and stuff is burning down over here. I told my mom, like, no, we have to go. It's going to be scary with little kids here. Yeah, very. The kids don't even come outside at night. They have to stay in the house. We have to keep them in the house. Do you think this is better than living in a homeless shelter? No. You'd rather live in the shelter? Yes. Why don't you? Because I'm on medication and they don't qualify me. What's the worst stuff you've experienced living here? Um, people trying to get in. Like the door, it doesn't lock. So they're able to open the door and just come in when they want to. Thieves, druggies, bad guys who come in for whatever they want. Inside this largest concentration of homeless RVs in mostly unincorporated LA County, the problems only continue. I'll leave it off right there. Man, I played a lot of that as well. Man, our people are living in a, a, a very low estate. You, you, you brothers and sisters just heard that. That that right there just like, that was a lot to take in. So you see that over there in Los Angeles, they got the biggest RV homeless, you know, like thing going. And a Jake out there, he used to be homeless and he now gives back to community by buying trailers and allowing the homeless to live in it but he rent him out for 500 a month and that's that i mean that's a good deal you know especially if you want a lower state like that you know 500 dollars that ain't that ain't nothing you know but you see that they took advantage of that jake you know the curses on them to take advantage of that jake that jake um no 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 it's 14 people in one trailer 14 people and you heard her testimony of how low the low state they in and then they got a spirit on them that the spirit of the lord well it's a spirit on them to keep them in that low state they can't even help themselves and that's why we need yahweh by shim yahweh to deliver us because the society number one is oppressing them to the point that they've given up to live so low this is a uh, deuteronomy 28 and 43 it says the stranger that is within thee shall get above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. The stranger that's within us is the Edomites. We live amongst them. They're up high. They live in the suburbs, but we came down very low. Us Israelites, you Negro Latino Native Americans. It says, He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So now we became the tail. And you know what comes out by the tail? That's where the excrement come out. So we ain't, we're living we're living in a dung hill, while Esau is living up high. Let's play this next thing we have here. And then you see the next thing I'm going to show is that you have Jake's out there living in a poor state, but then you got Jake's out there that said, "F that, I'm going I'm gonna sell my soul to to have the money, the riches, so I won't have to live in such a poor state." Or, or a middle class state. Look at all those beautiful black brothers in the NBA, and they all gotta be down with what they don't wanna be down with cause they whores. They know if I, if I say something, my career is over. So the devil knows he gets you hooked on his goodies, and then he threatens you all your life that I'ma take them from you. And so you live in constant fear of losing, so you get more desperate to keep more stuff, so you're willing to give him more access to your life to get more. This is why he always gives these artists, think about it, he gives them the first hit for free. They get a, sooner they make a song, they get a hit record, boom, they blow straight up to the top. He get them hooked on fame, new cars, moving out the hood, yeah, dialing the dream stuff, and all of a sudden, the second album, and what you gonna do? What you gonna? This when the deal comes. The deal ain't on the first album. Cause you ain't had a taste of fame yet. You ain't desperate. You ain't. You ain't. You ain't trying to keep nothing. See, when you ain't got nothing, ain't nothing to lose. But boy, when you got something, I can't go back to the hood. That's when the deal comes. If thou would worship me, if you would fall down and worship me. They might not took that. That's why you listen to these church entertainers and, and some of these people who you know came out of the church and that first album, oh, it was good. But 
But the second album was the deal. That's where you got to take the deal at. Because you do know ain't no money in music, right? Y'all don't even know that. Ain't no money in music. Music went out when, it, when the internet came. The money gone. Ain't nobody made no rec- more money but those that sold real album records. It's over. So when them artists go to the when them artists go to the entertainment industry, they get fronted money. They get royalty. They get an upfront piece of change. Give them just enough money to make them feel like they living good. But they owe the company, they owe the record industry, they owe the company. So he ain't got 50 grand to get back. Now you say, well, he sold a million records, don't matter. He didn't make 50 grand. Because they gave him a fraction of a cent. Y'all don't even know that. They gave him a fraction of a cent. He ain't made no money. So his apartment they own, the car they own, this dude, all that blink, they own all that. And he done got a taste of running with stars and got a taste of being somebody. How am I going to go back to it? But we got a way for you to keep what you got, get a little more. We got a way for you, you know, you know, you know, you know what? Look at all those. <laughs> yeah, man. You heard how the game go. And that's exactly what these rappers and these entertainers, that's what they call it. They call it the game. That's what it's called. It's a game. A big old game of selling your soul. If you want to be famed, if you want to have all this money, you got to play this game that Esau Edom then created. Now he said that he gets the East, the Edomites, the separate claim white people, what they do with our people, they get them hooked on the fame. That's what they get them hooked on. You know? And he said that, you know, now... It's no money in making uh, music because when the internet came, it made it to where people could download your music. It's free. All that. You know how it go. So the only people that really made music, I mean, money for music is the one that made records. They actually made records, which you don't, you don't see that no more. People just make, you know, uh, really it's like singles, man, and, and, and streamings. They stream. So they're not making money, but they're getting funded. They're getting loans from these different music industries or whatever. They're getting loans from them. And that's what's, that's where Esau is having that leverage over them. You know? So by the time that they didn't, you know, did shows and got all out there, they didn't even make more money than they was loaned. And then they they all, what they bought, is it goes straight to the company. So Jake get to that point where they put in a pickle like, damn, it's either I could... Just go back to the hood or or continue forward with my career. But Esau is telling them, in order for you to continue forward, you got to sell your soul. You see how the game go? You see? This is Matthew chapter 6. I mean, I'm sorry. This is uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 1 verse 11. It says, In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. For since we have departed, we have had much sorrow. So this device pleased them well. Then certain of the people were so forth therein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinance of the heathen. So Jake been selling out their soul since uh, the Greek captivity. You know, just to have money, cars, clothes, holes, and fame. Check this next one out. Now you say, well, he sold me. A man with no soul will try and replace it with worldly pleasures. But when they realize they can't, they turn back to the bloodlust, cash money. Dreams of being a billionaire. He thinks that this will fill the void he feels inside. But the Illuminati are liars. Welcome back to part two. Yeah, it's Bob. Have you decided on your sacrifice? I'm at the house now. It'll be done over the weekend. Is that your friend? Let him come to the door. We want to speak to him before you go. Mom, come on. You're going to embarrass me. Can I just go? 
Listen to your mother. Let him come to the door. We're not just going to let you fly off to the Bahamas with some stranger. It's open. Come on in. We finally meet. Hello, Cash. My daughter's told me a lot. She's told me a lot about you. Please take a seat. So, Mr. Cash, can I ask you a question? Do you believe in God? Did I say something funny? Man, it's not that. I've been asked that question twice in one day. Galatians 6, 7, 9. You reap what you sow. In other words, Mr. Cash, whatever you put out there in the world will come back to you, good or bad. Look, Cash, what my husband is trying to say is we are entrusting our daughter's safety with you. We need to know that we can trust you. So I will ask you again. Do you believe in God? Of course I believe in God. and I go to church with my moms every Sunday. Don't worry. Your daughter uh, will be safe with me. <laughs> and th this is it. Here, this guy right here, this channel right here. He goes through like the life of a person who wants to be the rapper, the one who wants to be the rock star, who wants to be the NBA player, and he puts together these cartoons. So I played this specific one because the next one it shows you that he takes this girl in the Bahamas and, he's, and he sacrifices her. And these parents that allowed her daughter to go to the Bahamas with this guy, a nigga named Cash, they come to find out that their daughter is, ain't gonna never return. She's been she's she's been sacrificed or killed. And you see that they had a conversation with the guy and and everything of the sort. But this is the practices of selling out your soul to the Edomite. Being a part of the Illuminati and devil worship. You got to sacrifice people, man. So just this is, this is based off of real life scenarios. People go through this. They allow their daughters to go off on the weekend with some dude. She excuse me. She's talking about how he's he's successful and the parents thinking like, oh, it's money, it's money. Oh, you got a you got a guy with some money. And now your daughter never returned, man. Because she was the sacrifice. And we know about all these celebrities and all the different sacrifice the sacrifices they they've done in order to keep their fame. This is Matthew 16 and 25. It says, For who for whosoever will save his life. So, <clears throat> excuse me, for whosoever shall save his life shall lose it, and whosoever, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is the what is a man profit if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's a very heavy scripture, and that should like keep you in fear to not ever sell your soul to Satan. It says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then... And then he shall reward every man according to, to, to his works. So, man, we trying to do that which is right. And Yahweh Shai going to record, uh, um, reward you with righteousness. But if you're doing that which is wicked, you're selling your soul, you're going to get rewarded with judgment. And I noticed in this little series that the main guy, he based him after Jay-Z. Because that's one of them evil dudes that's going to be judged. So yeah, hey, through the spirit and power, y'all about Shemal Shai, man. It's been another current events, prophecy and madness, the devil's food. And um, I hope your brothers and sisters was edified, man. Keep staying strong, keep fighting, keep doing that which is right. And may the Lord be with us, man. And, and may y'all about Shemal Shai come sooner than later. Man, with that being said, y'all about Shemal Shai, back a thumb, I can step. Shalom.